Left and right aren't the same. It sounds obvious, but ask yourself, if you were talking to an alien on the phone, could you communicate to them which direction was left and which was right? It wasn't until 1956 that this question had an answer. Cheng Xiong Wu, widely regarded as the best experimental physicist of the second half of the 20th century, proved that the answer is yes in the now eponymously named Wu experiment, and she answered it by studying the handedness, or chirality, of particles. So I should probably explain that. I want you to think, for example, of throwing a clock face first. If you're looking in the direction of motion, its hands spin counterclockwise. We call that left-handed because you have to use your left thumb to point in the direction of motion so the clock hands spin in the direction your fingers curl. Now, particles don't actually spin, but they do have a spinning quantity called quantum spin. And so we can define an analogous notion of chirality based on the direction of the quantum spin of those particles relative to their motion. For more information on this, go watch part 13 of my quantum field theory playlist. So the question is, does physics care about the chirality of particles? She showed that yes, it does. Let me explain how she proved it. A certain type of cobalt atom with 33 neutrons is radioactive. Occasionally, the atom will decay into nickel and will emit an electron and an antineutrino in the process. Now, it also happens to be the case that that isotope of cobalt has five units of spin, and the resulting nickel isotope has four. So by conservation of angular momentum, the electron and the antineutrino together have to carry away one unit of spin. So let's say for the sake of argument that the spin of the cobalt is pointing up. Then, during the decay, either the electron goes up and the antineutrino goes down, or vice versa. In either case, the spin of both particles have to be up since they both have one half unit of spin, and they need to carry away one unit of spin. So if the universe didn't care about handedness, there would be no preference for the electron going up, and hence being right-handed, or the electron going down, and hence being left-handed. But what Wu showed with her experiment was that electrons are almost always emitted down relative to the cobalt's up spin. And that means that beta decay definitively favors left-handed electrons and right-handed antineutrinos. Later, it was shown that the mediator of this kind of decay, the weak interaction, actually can't interact with right-handed electrons at all, or left-handed antineutrinos. That is, the weak interaction is maximally chiral. Unfortunately, Wu's work proving this was snubbed by the Nobel Committee and she was never awarded the prize, even though she experimentally proved a fundamental property of the universe. Instead, theoretical physicists Li and Yang, who first described this possibility, were awarded the Nobel. But the two physicists did both thank her in their speeches and went on to try to nominate her for her contribution, and she was nominated at least seven times in the next ten years.